This video looks at the reaction mechanism for carbon ions. What I want to do first, just consider what a carbon ion functional group looks like, the type of bonding it's got, and therefore work out what kind of reaction mechanism will occur with it. So, draw yourself a carbon ion group. It should look something like this. Now, the key thing about this, of course, the C double bond O can be on two different types of functional, or have been part of two different functional groups. If here I've got a hydrocarbon chain, and here I've just got a single H, of course you have an aldehyde. If both here and here I have carbons, then not an aldehyde, but a keto. Of course, I've only drawn the C double bond O because that's really what we're interested in now. The key to this reaction mechanism is understanding the bonding here. There's a particular difference between this carbon and oxygen. Pause. What is it? Of course, the oxygen is more electronegative, so it is going to draw electrons to itself within that covalent bond, the carbon is going to be left slightly electron deficient, and so we give it a delta plus. So this is going to be key to understanding this mechanism. Of course, to understand the bonding, it's a double bond, so what we have is we've got our two p orbitals, one carbon, one for the oxygen, and of course they overlap. How do they overlap? They're going to have a side-on overlap, P orbitals, that's the way we describe full marks. It's that formation of the pi bond. Not, not forgetting, of course, that here we've got sigma bonds, and Remember when we label these pi, that both the section above and below, the orbitals overlap above and below the sigma bond, and both parts of those which form the pi bonds. So make sure you label them both as pi if the question asks you to draw uh, a diagram of the bonding in the carbon ion group. So, before we move on to actually drawing the mechanism, as soon as we can work out what type of mechanism this will be. We've got a delta plus carbon, we've got a delta minus oxygen. Focusing in on the carbon, what would be attracted to the carbon by electrophile or a nuclear So, carbon, delta plus, is electron deficient. It needs something that's going to react and will donate electrons to it. So we're going to need a nuclear fire, which is an electron pair donator. So that's the first part of the name of our mechanism. It's going to be nuclear filling. We've got a double bond here. How does double bonds normally react? Yep, addition. So the mechanism we're going to be looking at is nuclear filling. So let's go over the page. Here we've got basic reaction mechanism, or in this case an aldehyde, but it could be a ketone, it's being reduced to, in this case, a primary alcohol. What we've got to do, of course, is draw the mechanism for this reaction. We've said already that it's going to be nucleophilic addition. Notice the way you spell it. It's only got one L in the field part. Important. So that could be a quality of written communication mark. Now, it's a reduction. I'm going to highlight in red the reduction. This two H in square brackets. This, of course, is a simplification. We use the reducing agent. Of course, if you remember what it was. Yeah, sodium or a hydride. 
NaBH4. We need to know that is the reagent, but in the actual balanced equation, we can use our H in square brackets, just like we do for the oxygen tube alcohols. Oh, it's here, in fact, we've got the opposite reaction. We've got the reduction to form an alcohol rather than the oxidation of an alcohol to form an alcohol. So we're simply going backwards from what we've learned in F322. Now, looking at this mechanism then, we start with our molecule. First thing we do, we remind ourselves how this is going to react by putting our delta plus and our delta minus on the carbon and the oxygen. Our nuclear file in this case comes from the sodium boiler hydride. It's a hydride ion, H minus, so it's an H. It's got a lone pair. So this will donate its electrons to the carbon. And I've got my curly arrow going from the lone pair, it's going to be precise, going from the lone pair to the electron deficient delta plus carbon. Now at the same time this happens, because now you're forming what is a fifth bond to that carbon, one of these bonds is going to have to break. And of course, that's going to be the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, which bond breaks there? Yeah, it's the sigma bond. <laughs> it's not the sigma bond, it's the pi bond that's going to break there. Then we go on to our intermediate. Our intermediate now is going to have an oxygen uh, with a lone pair on it. Because with our curly arrow showing the movement of a pair of electrons, the electron pair that were forming that pi bond is broken and it's been uh, given to the oxygen. So the oxygen has a lone pair and a negative charge on it. Notice I've drawn this black H here it's just to show that this hydride ion, our nucleophile, is now bonded there. You don't need to do, make that distinction. Uh, when you're drawing out your mechanism. Then, what's important here now is to finish this mechanism, we need another molecule. What is it? So we've got our water molecule. This reaction is occurring in aqueous conditions. And we need a curly arrow to go out and connect to that H. So from the lone pair, the movement of the pair of electrons to the hydrogen on the water. So now we're going to form our alcohol. Of course, we're just forming a bond with that hydrogen. The bond's got to break. There's a bond breaking. And the electrons are moving to the oxygen. To finish off then, we get two products. First one. is our primary alcohol. What else do we get? Yep, there it is, plus LH minus. So that is the reaction mechanism for a carbon ion, a nucleophilic addition. A hydride ion, a nucleophile, attacks the electron deficient delta plus carbon breaking the pi bond between the C and the O, forming the intermediate, which has the O with a lone pair, negative charge, which forms a bond to M with a hydrogen from a water molecule, and you're left with your product OH- and your alcohol, in this case, a primary alcohol. Of course, this reaction is exactly the same if you have a ketone. Instead of having an H here, you'd have a different part of the molecule, CH3.